We're bringing height is amount in the open tonight, talking about whether discrimination against short people should be banned. Back to our out in the open panel, Keith Boykin, Rachel Maddow, Mark Smith. Uh, I guess I have to confess between all of us, probably on average six feet tall, uh, <laughs> we, needed, we needed to explain that to our audience. Yes, but right. let's talk about this legislation that's being considered in Massachusetts. Isn't it a slippery slope to start fining people if they are discriminating against short people or not? Well, I think that discrimination on the basis of any, you know, morally neutral characteristic, whether it's uh, race or, or gender or height or disability or lack thereof, any of those things is ugly and cheap and we ought to try to get rid of it. The question is whether legislation is the right way to do that. I don't know that, you know, if we started looking on people like Napoleon and Danny DeVito as, you know, great moral upstanding uh, models for life, maybe that would do more than banning heightest discrimination. I don't know. There are plenty of short people to do or that are extremely successful and are very famous and have changed the world for the better. So to me, talking about discrimination against short people is just silly. And all it can possibly do, frankly, is to encourage more lawsuits in a nation that already has too many of them. Well, I, I disagree with what you said there because there are plenty of black people who are famous and have money, but that doesn't mean that black people don't suffer discrimination. Same thing with all the other groups of people who suffer discrimination. Uh, you have to look at more than just the isolated cases. Of course there's discrimination against people who are short. The question you is need what- legislation. Yeah, the question is what it. do you do about it. And, and that's not really clear. And I think that's that's what Rachel was saying. It may not be the best way to tackle the problem, but there is a problem. Don't deny it. I want to move on to our quick vote question that we posted a little bit earlier tonight. Do you think the U.S. will still be in Iraq four years from now? 70% of you said yes. 30% say no. Interesting results, although we need to make it pretty clear this is not a scientific sampling. You're not surprised by these numbers, are you? No, no. And I and actually, do you think I, we will be in Iraq for years? I think years we'll from be now? in Iraq how many? for four years. How many soldiers? I, um, I, I, I don't know the numbers, but I can tell you that we need to have. Uh, we need to have boots on the ground in the Middle East for decades to come, and whether we like it or not, because the Islamic fascists have declared war on us, we need to be in their backyards in the Middle East, and Iraq is as good a place as any other place in the Middle East for our Just soldiers to be. Just any place where there are Arabs, <laughs> then it's okay? Really? I mean, any place in the Middle East, Iraq had nothing to do with the attacks on us. The mother load where the Islamic fascist threat comes from is the Middle East, whether we like it or not. Just we need Middle to East be our generally. soldiers there. We should all just be, we could all be in Bahrain. We, we and can we'd be, be, fine. We can be, be in Saudi them. Arabia. We can be in Iraq. Perhaps we should be in Iran. How, listen, how I'm willing to let our military leaders make the decision, but we need to be in the Middle Mark, East where about, the Islamic fascist threat comes from. Where four fifths of the population doesn't want us to leave. How about, a, how about a population where the, the, the people who live there think that us leaving would make them more safe? If we can pick anywhere in the Middle East, really, then let's pick a place that would love to have us. Right now, we've got a lot of bases and a lot of places where they're not dying to get us off of their soil. You've got to be kidding me. All right, I want to move us <laughs> along. <laughs> because I know this will get even a hotter response to some of the emails we've gotten from you tonight. Our first one comes from Thor, and uh, this was responding to a story we did at the top of the hour uh, about uh, Vietnam or, and, and uh, Iraq war veterans coming home, how they're treated, and current uh, soldiers being critical of this war effort. He writes, I am so sick of soldiers who voice out their opinions against the war in Iraq on news. As soldiers, we are not allowed to choose our wars. We just perform our duties. Another thing I'm so tired about is CNN always constantly shadowing Durham reports on Iraq. Those soldiers who protest against the Iraq army, either in or out of uniform, are a disgrace to the unif uniform. There's, there's you would argue they were traitors earlier on. Well, look, you know, John Kerry became a presidential candidate because he became famous by protesting the Vietnam War. Obviously, he one the person, War. right? Obviously, one path to political success. He was also is, a U.S. senator. Remember that. That's yeah. right. And how did he become a U.S. senator? In part because of his fame that he got from being anti-war and opposing the Vietnam War. Not a bad political strategy I, for John Kerry. It worked for him. It may work for others. Well, obviously it didn't work for John Kerry in terms of getting elected president, but the issue here is bigger than this because the truth is when you send people to war, you don't give them the support they need, you, you bring them back to the country and you put them in rat-infested hospitals and then you let them be, let them survive homeless on their own. I mean, we don't really care about our soldiers. That, that's a disgrace. And it, this administration should be ashamed of its policy toward the U.S. troops. That's not support. I hate to close it on this note. You got one from a young man who says he thinks you could go, should go sit back at some desk somewhere in a corner as you have not served in a Iraq and you are not qualified to comment on the men and women who are risking their well, lives. Well, you know, I never served in the DEA, but I oppose, you know, illegal drug use. Just because you didn't serve doesn't mean you can't have an opinion that's all educated. Right. Got to leave it there. Keith Boykin, Rachel Maddow, Mark Smith, thank you all. Just minutes away.